Hello and welcome to the Junkyard Love Podcast. Welcome to the Junkyard Love Podcast. Today's recommendation before said podcast is going to be another podcast that I like to listen to. This podcast is from evolutionary biologist Brett Weinstein. Um, He actually lives in Portland, if that tickles your fancy. I'm just going to read the description of the Dark Horse podcast real quick. It's just desirable. I think you guys would enjoy it. If you like my podcast, you'll like more intelligent people talking about more intelligent things in the same manner. On the Dark Horse podcast, we will explore questions that matter with tools that work. Many episodes will be long-form discussions. Some guests will be well-known, others obscure, but all all of them chosen because they have demonstrated unusual insight. Other episodes of the Dark Horse podcast will be solo missions in which Brett dives into issues alone, using an evolutionarily... (laughs) using an evolutionary lens to reveal patterns in nature, including human nature. The state and future of civilization will be reoccurring theme, so buckle up. Sounds great, right? Check that out. Brett Weinstein, Dark Dark Horse Podcast. Um, also, please like, comment, subscribe. All those sort of things really do help me out. Um, just just share. If, if you enjoy it, if it's good content, if you, um, if you benefit from it, just share. And if you aren't drinking water, are you out of your mind? What are you doing? You, you haven't drank water in a while? Has it been, is there no water next to you right now? Is it, wh- where's the nearest water cup to you? When's the last time you took a drink of it? Come on, listener, drink some water. All right, let's roll. Here's the episode. Reality is running a lot, Spencer. I, uh, I feel very thin. I did so when I was in Lake Shasta. Um, I like, cause it's like, I know that we're going to drink a lot. We did our trip. It's just like the time that I know, mm-hmm. you know, let's prep, let's prep for it. So I woke up every morning and, um, I ran like, it was like 30 flights in elevation and like four miles every morning. Uh, and I have like, and I'm saying that not to brag, but just because it's like impressive that I'm continuously doing it. And so it's just getting easier. Like, it's not like a, a difficult or easy thing even. It's just a thing that I do at mm-hmm. this point w- with, with running already. So it's just a fucking cool place to be. Um, but yeah, I've been running a lot and then I've been eating, um, I have a shake every day with lots of mushrooms and collagen per year, uh, uh, suggestion and, um, healthy greens. And I think that these things are actually like thinning me out. I think it's helping my digestion, um, a ton. Uh, my inflammation is down from some of the mush- mushroom powders. Uh, my cardiovascular is up from some of the mushroom powders. Um, yeah, yeah, that's so good. Have you tried cordyceps yet to run? Um, yes, I think that's one of them that I'm taking. Is that cardiovascular? That's, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so yeah. cordyceps yes. help you utilize oxygen better. And like if you take it before you run, you'll be noticed, you'll have noticeably better endurance. Oh, yeah. I and, and I and I, so when I get gassed, I can bring myself back with a slow heart rate in 30 seconds. It's pretty fucking sick. Feels good. Yeah. Um, but it's there. So the thing about mushroom powders, I mean, Lion's Made does kind of give you like, it's not a buzz at all, but it's, um, if, if you've, if you're not familiar with like a head change, you might feel like a little uptick with Lion's Mane for sure. Or I don't know, maybe people feel like a big uptick, but, uh, other than that, the other ones, you know, for inflammation and in cordyceps and stuff, um, I didn't really feel too different, like cognitive wise. So it's cool to feel, feel like your body. Oh, my body feels good. It's a thing that we don't really have connection with like we don't really know when we're feeling inflamed because we just our brain feels crappy too Mm -hmm. but when your body is loose and not inflamed your brain's feeling normal that's nice too or if you're just inflamed all the time you never know because it's just how you are i think that everybody's inflamed all the time 100 i feel like that's not even like a stretch any listener who doesn't really know that they're inflamed or they don't really know much about inflammation give give me like a one minute inflammation talk like why is it bad or what is it and why does it happen yeah start explaining like i'm five inflammation what's up with it so usually inflammation, good thing. Your body uses a healing process. So like, okay, you got a bruise, you get blood flow to the area, it, it inflames, it swells up right. and you get uh, fresh nutrients to it. But when you're chronically inflamed from like dietary choices, it can happen in a lot of ways. One of the really common ones is, um, well, poor sleep, it happens. And uh, a you need a ratio of omega-6s to omega-3 fatty acids. So like Omega-3s are in like fish mm-hmm. and omega-6s are in like french fries, 
like b- bad fats essentially. And one of the when you get swayed too far to omega sixes, you become chronically inflamed. I mean, people will notice like like um like my wrists will hurt, your feet will hurt, just kind of for no reason. You'll have like a very puffy face, puffy under eyes, so like bloated. You, yeah, if you ever become not inflamed and then become inflamed again you'll notice it is mm-hmm. it's terrible my fingers swell. if you ever feel if you wear rings um you definitely feel it in, in your hands a lot of times i did anyway yeah and then you'll begin to hold extracellular water so you want to hold water in the cells like in your muscles or in like just your cells in general and when you're holding it outside of it it just causes all these things but this can cause um usually like brain inflammation is where it's bad because it causes like a cognitive downtick. I mean, almost every single chronic disease is linked back to inflammation. Mm -hmm. Like Alzheimer's is an inflammatory disease. Mm -hmm. Like heart disease can be to some degree. So, you know, as you explain this to me, I find myself just like, I was thinking like, why the fuck is this not the most known thing? Like, why isn't it taught? Like, why don't, instead of watching like, uh, the Dems slam the libtards. Why aren't people who <laughs> were watching on TV telling us how to reduce inflammation? Like, why aren't we concentrating on shit like this? Like, why don't people know? Uh, same thing with the uh, uh, coronavirus. Like, nobody was saying, here's how you get healthier, though. Let's strengthen those immune systems, guys. We don't know shit about this thing, but let's come together. Here's what I know about inflammation. We're going to get all the top U.S. doctors, 150 of them in a room, and they're going to do a conference. Um, or, well, not in a room. Maybe that'd probably be a bad idea. But Like a Zoom meeting. You know? A Zoom yeah, meeting. It um, but it's it's ridiculous that, you know, these things are actually pretty important. Like, I, I don't think that, I guess, you know, it's not like our par- my parents didn't know, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, and they still, like, don't know, like, they they wouldn't know about this, but I just think it should be normal taught. Instead, we're taught the Kellogg's food guide pyramid. Yeah. So now we got to take a step back and look at the incentive of media and government when it comes to health. And as we have a 57, 56% of adults are obese. And that's not even counting morbidly obese, which is like a smaller segment of the population that's in that. But we do not, it's just not a priority. It doesn't make money. Like people lobby our education. You mm-hmm. know, the news is not a tool to make your life better. It's a tool of control. Right. So what? Like, there's no. If you're gonna fill 24 hours a news cycle, like they don't give a shit if you're inflamed or not. They just want you to pay attention. Right. Like they don't want you to feel better. They want you to feel how they feel. Exactly. Yeah. So there, it's very unfortunate, especially like as I mean, I guess I'm a health professional. I mean, that sounds cooler than it is. I'm a personal trainer. But to see people just like everyone owns a body, like you pilot a meat vehicle, you do like why you should know how to operate it optimally. Like, you mm-hmm. know, like, you know, you need to put oil in your car and do all these mm-hmm. things like basic maintenance. Like, why don't people know how to do that for the body? Mm-hmm. And it's hard to see. But I mean, it, it does make it really rewarding to tell people. But the fact that like nobody's told them before they're 40 when I see them, right. like it feels really bad because like you could have been living so much more optimally and felt so much better for so long if somebody would have just told you this. And this is readily available information that just right. nobody is peddling. Yeah, this is, dude, it, it feels important to me. Like the older I get, the more I look back at like, man, since I was however many, like there's, in my particular life, I had to learn so much on my own. Just my whole life has been do it yourself. So for me, like even nutrition was like, like learning about what's good for you. And I feel like everybody is stuck with that. Everybody is like stuck with, we'll just go to the internet and try to figure it out. But then there's all these ads that are fed to us. There's all this blah, blah, blah. And in, in our brain, something I go on a lot about on like my Instagram story is, is the way we think about our bodies and in health and uh, uh, weight. And, and I don't like scales in, in a, um, unless you're someone who's actively trying to get specific goals on weight. It's like, why do you care so much about weight? And what about feeling good? What about eating foods? Oh, is this going to make me fat so I can't fit into that swimsuit for the vacation? No, fuck that. Fuck that. Care about what's going to make you feel good. And if you feel good every day from what you're eating, you know, a symptom of that is maybe you're going to lose some weight. Yeah. But um, the, the, the way that we're kind of forced to look at everything, like from a young age, um, like, you know, like if if you're forced to go to, I, I, I don't know. I think, the our perception of our own bodies is not in our own control and it feels important to me to at every step that i can since i've all this crap that i've learned and failed at and tried to learn and failed at um to like get people to talk about it and get people to like kind of learn like oh maybe i don't know that much about health or maybe i'm looking at it in a different it could be looking at it a different way or um i don't know I, i don't see kids who are like 10 years old right now like 
they should be growing up by the time they're 15 and they should know everything that I know in a good way. That like would be it, great. I would love that. fucking awesome. Yeah. I guess we got to take a step back and figure out why it is the way it is. You know, there's no, I mean, you look at the medical industry, there's no money in wellness, money in symptoms. And people, like it's so hard to parse information because people are trying to sell you things. Like there's monetary gain involved. So when you, like, oh, I'll get on the internet and figure it out. Well, if you don't understand how biology works, like your sniff test, like you can't be skeptical because you don't have the means to be skeptical. So you get marketed by something really flashy and you buy it. And I mean, there's already, I mean, the, the biggest problem with that is you're already looking outward to try to get a cure, even mm. though it's probably a wellness or a lifestyle thing. And then they're also selling you something that isn't going to do what you think it's going to do. So I would say, and then again, with the image thing and weight loss, like if you're eating stuff that's going to make you feel good, you, I would bet my life that you're going to lose weight if, if you're overweight or mm -hmm. um, like in a, a above healthy body fat range, because that would be a lot of fiber, a lot of greens. Like this stuff is really filling and not very calorie dense. So I mean, of course you're going to lose weight. And I do think that the um, the perspective is unacceptable because we have such a vain society that culture and just like commercialism just tries to, hey, you're without. I'm going to sell you something that's going to make you whole. Here's this supplement oh, right. rather than the inverse of that. So I think it's just a, like a multitude of problems with American culture and nothing I've ever been taught was helpful really i had to figure it all out on my own which mm -hmm. is people don't have time to do that it doesn't seem like like i mean you work at what people are overworked so they're forced to eat like shit i mean they're not forced to but it's just what ends up happening and then no one's gonna help them figure it out and this is why i mean this might be shameless plug but i feel like everyone should have a trainer and a therapist right. we'll hire someone to figure it out for you right I, I was talking about this. Um, um, uh, I was talking about this with Shaley. Is I think that what's going to happen in in Game B in our next, like whatever's next. Hopefully, there's not a war in between. Uh, I'm hoping that there's some sort of something that that pops up in our world in the next, you know, ten fifteen years. That is before hospitals, because I feel like in our heads we don't understand that hospitals and in, in the that big building is for like, hey, I'm bleeding. Can you help me sew it up? Like that's you know, it's for so much more than that. Surgeries and and so much more, of course, but. It's for fixing us when we're broken. But like, what about optimizing yourself so you don't get broken as easily? Like why, why isn't it taught to people like, um, well, okay. So, so it is taught to people like there's like this general, almost like yelling at an audience that's not listening of like, you guys, you got to stretch, you got to eat your greens. You got it. Like there's that, but how do we like, like how do we actively create this thing that is the, the, personal therapist or it's just a therapist and a personal trainer and like teach you how to take care of this fucking meat vehicle so you don't hurt yourself because the food you eat hurts your brain dude it, it hurts when you're inflamed you don't think as clearly when you're feeling crappy um and we're such societal creatures when when we're not when we're not comfortable with our body we're not able to think about like like, what do I want to do? What makes me happy? What, oh, like, let me remember to get flowers for my wife because we're so self-conscious about being fat. Like it's, it's these long, we don't see things as like a, uh, uh, over the course of a few years, like what is the effects of, of bad food and not knowing how to take care of your body and the importance of, you know, you know, just having your, your breath from your belly, like these sort of things, you know? Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm hoping that there's something that uh, pops up and helps people not think they need to just go to hospitals. Um, to, and then, you know, like the, my 600 pound life is a good example. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, that that's, that's fucking so sad that those people didn't know, or they, they, they didn't have help with their addictions or habits. Um, I mean, obviously this is ending the ending world hunger. Of course, anybody would want this, mm -hmm. but I don't know. I th I'm hoping that there's more smart people that pop up and make something before hospitals. I think that uh, right now you and I are both frogs sitting in a, a bucket of cold water that's slowly boiling. Like there is friction rising and you do see like wellness is becoming a thing. Like in, the, the response to Instagram was in s extreme. It was extremely vain and you see a lot of people trying to get very aesthetically fit. But from what I've seen, I mean, I've been following just the fitness industry for probably nine years since I've been exercising and wellness is becoming 
the pivotal of that. People want to move better. People want to feel better. And it seems like that it's just going to happen. Like people already have a massive distrust of the medical industry. Mm-hmm. They don't like hospitals. Mm-hmm. They don't like doctors. They don't want to take a pill. People have an ad. I mean, look at vaccines. People don't want to take medication. People don't like it. People don't like to take this one thing. They don't trust this industry. But if they can go somewhere else and find this wellness in this like right. personal ubiquity right. and just like anything that is non invasive, it's, I mean, I've seen it in clients even over the last two years. Like more and more people are like, do you have any like herbal supplements that I could take? Like, like how does breath work work? Like what do you mm. do for anxiety? And it's, it's been awesome. And I really think we, like you said, humans are super bad at looking at things long term. I mean, we didn't evolve to do that. I mean, you want to survive tomorrow, not next year. Mm -hmm. So I really think it's happening. Yeah. Yeah. And I have a lot of faith in just the path of humanity in general, even though it looks so bleak now, even with culture stuff, like progressive movements and people having freedom over time has just slowly gotten better and better. And like the image of marginalized people will get better and better. And I think that once we start looking at obesity and not like a disgust and more like, Hey, this is a symptom of a problem that they probably didn't control because they didn't have control of their lifestyle factors. This is going to get even better. Mm-hmm. I got a lot of faith, man. I think it's going to be good. I think people are, are like waking up to the idea of just like, man, I want to live my life and feel well. Right. I mean, do you think that, uh, I think that, uh, I think that there's a huge search for meaning. Um, you know, like, like that's, that's anybody's life purpose, right? Is to find their meaning. But I think that there's like this new, there's this new sense of meaning. There's this more like, maybe we're more attuned to it, or maybe we're like waking up to, you know, when, when you're feeling like crap all the time and then all of a sudden you want to like, you know what, dude, I'm so sick of feeling like crap. I want to get healthy. There's, you know, that right there is enough to spark all those people who, who are like, I want to, I want to learn about this. They're going to have to relook at like the meaning like what, what, what is it mean? Like, what do I want? Why am I eating healthier? Like, you know, and they're going to be, we're going to be forced to kind of look at why we do the things we do, the more that this wellness thing pops up. And I think that that's a good thing. Um, yeah. I talk to clients all the time about like, Hey, why do you want this? Like, do you think that what, what's, what, what are answers that you get? Uh, well, usually it's pushback on like stricter diets and i always tell people hey if if living this lifestyle to get to this point like this is the toll that you need to do to look like this and if it's going to make you if you're it's going to detract from your overall happiness and this is obviously if they're like healthy people they just want to like have a better physique in their eyes that this is the toll to get here and if it's going to bring you less happiness to do that, then your goal is going to bring you happiness, then you shouldn't do it. That we should just look for, let's just optimize how you feel and it, maybe right. it'll come then. But I do think the the why of health is changing in people. Like, and like anything, like you see people get stopped at their surroundings. Like they try to, oh, I'm going to change my life. I want to feel better. I'm going to do this thing. And then everyone around them's not and they slowly get tugged back in. Mm-hmm. So I really think I would love to see a big pulse like we get a lot of people. I mean, just like how any movement starts, like right. it's it's hard when there's not a lot, but when you have right. a lot of people behind you, it's going to get done. Yeah. I think that, um, you know, th- things like that are what give me, you know, I try to keep my faith. I try to keep my like, okay, you know what? Like every person that messages you or every person that does listen to the podcast, like those, you know, those are people and that's their life. Like the, the numbers when they go up, like they're not, they're not a crazy amount, but they're, it's like, those are people. And I'm hoping that those are ripples. And I hope that, um, not that I'm like a know-it-all, n- like like I'm saying the only right answer, that my guests are the only people who are saying the truth and everything else is not. It's never what I would try to suggest. I'm just saying like the more that we can see each other as like brother and sister and like, hey man, like I didn't choose to be born. Like I don't know shit what's going on either, but like here's what I've learned so far. What have you learned? Like that's what I want to, like every interaction can be like that. Every person you meet could be like this new just vessel of knowledge. Um, and, and I think that, you know, as we're the internet, obviously like evolves our brain, man. Like I think that a lot, a lot more and more we're seeing people just bypass the whole, like, like, um, I don't even know, like we're, we're, we're going underground or going above the like bullshit, like, Oh, okay. I get it. Kellogg's you're trying to sell me this thing. That's why. Okay. No, thanks. What, what is really healthy you type in you type in on reddit and then you have people across the world who are like hey here's what worked for me it seems like you have this sort of thing going on um i think that when we when we 
I don't know. So, so do you think like the, the people who are like bypassing like the, I, I'm trying to think of like what the word is. Like, what are we bypassing here in this analogy? Well, it sounds like brands, honestly. Brands like, like I mean, I want to say like political, like the, the wrong info that they give us, the bias info, like the, the people who write our history books that only give us the American bias oh, side. You know uh, what I mean? Yeah, I understand. What's it? I don't know. Well, I mean, we're just kind of back. Government. The goal we're, is to bypass like dogma and information that's been filtered through a viewpoint. Mm -hmm. Like, if I'm really like if somebody's really, I mean, it's just like you said, Kellogg's. Like, no shit, they're gonna try to sell you Kellogg's products, and people are waking up to the fact that I think people are waking up to the idea that most people are just trying to sell you shit and not help you. Mm -hmm. And Pete, like, they're getting kind of tired of it. So we're just not listening to, like, we're not falling for flashy branding anymore. Or at least I hope people aren't. And they're like, hey, like, looking at this product objectively is like, hey, what is this helping me? And then you go talk to other people and maybe see what they say about it. And it's just not, not that one click buy mentality. Like, people are starting to dig a little more. Right. I think that's good questioning why we're doing the things that we're doing. I think why is just a really important question to ask. Start with why with why yes um so right now let's talk about um let's talk about where we're at in um i mean the world for sure like australia is just fucking is australia still on fire no what the hell's going on but um we have uh you know some serious shit the last few days um let, let's start with that you want to just fill in um just if anybody's listening to this podcast at a different time you want to say what's going on what so in minneapolis I believe one to two days ago, a um, a black man died because he was positionally asphyxiated by the police. And a and they go through training to un, like when you handcuff someone, you don't want to lay them on their stomach for very long because they just can't die like that. You want to roll them onto their side, like they get trained for this, like very well knowledgeable on this thing. Not me, but I'm saying police are. Um, there were multiple videos that are there's. You can't glean any like cont or intent from it, which has made it a very weird situation. But this police officer, he was suspected of forging a um, oh, what is it? A check at Target, and he surrendered peacefully, didn't resist, and uh, he died with the police officer's knee on the back of his neck after asking, saying, hey, I can't breathe help. Hey, I can't yeah, breathe help yeah. for, for minutes. Like, this just went on and on. And this is not the first time this shit has happened, Like, the, but this one... No, shit well, like this just happens every single day. Yeah, it just but this one video. was on film at this, like, very... Like, we're, we're in an uh, unsettled position now. I mean, they're... they're so, so what? So they're rioting? Yeah, it was extremely egregious, and, um, you know... Every movement, like Black Lives Matter, is extremely dismissed by a certain part of society. Like, all the peaceful protesting gets dismissed. Like, no, you can't take a knee. Like, why wouldn't you resolve this somewhere else? Like, why, oh, why are you going to do this? So, if you're being marginalized and you're not being heard peacefully, you have one option. You, got, you, you have to do this. You have to at least show some kind of force. And riots don't, or riots don't really start out, like, looting and burning the police station, but they rev up. And when you have a group of people that has been just systemically shafted for so long, like this is just what happens. This is what happens. Mm -hmm. And so they storm the police station. And I love this. Like there's a big anarchist streak in me. Like I I'm a real burn it down kind of, <laughs> kind of guy. So you see, this is how it always, once the people understand that if they band together, there's very few of them and, and we are the reason they're there. So they can't do anything about it. So they band up, they raid the police station, take all the riot gear, burn it down, and um, they start looting. And looting, people are, are very upset about looting. Big corporations like Target, like, oh, like you shouldn't do that. But I'm like, if in a capitalist society you marginalize a lot of people and goods and services are put above human life, mm -hmm. one of the biggest signs of defiance is to steal goods and services. So, like, that would be why that's a tactic like that. And, um, like, people are just tired of it, you know. Like, right. I'm tired of it. Like, everyone everyone that is seeing, like, African Americans and minorities get marginalized in the country. And we have very tense race relations right now because of uh, how our government is running. They're right. just very, they've really scapegoated a lot of minorities. It's just gotten worse and worse. Like, white supremacy is up. 
Like they're just sick of it. Like priest brutality has been a problem for a very long time. And I'm frankly, I'm really glad to see something like this happen, even though there is collateral damage that is unacceptable. Like when you start to lose, like some businesses, like it's, it's a mob. So some businesses that are probably privately owned by good people, like do take a hit, but for the greater message, I am, I'm glad to see it happen. Like something like this needed to happen. So what do you think? I agree. I think that uh, where my brain goes is like years in the future of um, years in the future with optimism. So what would be, we can't keep trying to squash these bugs as they happen. Like we need to like, there needs to be an intelligence brought to the people who are unaware of their racism or their, uh, their, there needs to be something that because there you know there's echo chambers that keep this racism alive like so what in in the future um gosh it sucks because you you just picture the the big arm of the government with too much technology being able to like snuff out who's who and what they're thinking but what like so so how would we be in the future how would we go about solving the root of the problem because because to me the the riots in this in the, the like people being killed is a symptom of of what like of of racism being allowed of just massive of, systemic racism honestly and ple- how do we get these motherfuckers smarter then like how do we who the people in charge yeah well or the or the 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 cops who are apparently unknowingly racist like well first we got to stop minimizing black lives matter you know all lives matter and blue lives matter yet yeah, yes okay we all under, we, these people are egalitarians they understand that lives are important that's why they're protesting but they're extremely dismissive to the original cause because you're like hey like my if hypothetically like i'm an african-american like i see people of my like demographic being marginalized and we make a a movement called black lives matter and you see a bunch of like just like well off other people say no all lives matter that's extremely dismissive and you're not actually looking at the problem and then blue lives matter is even more egregious because you're like you know what's not happening you know there's not a lot of young black men going and killing police officers all the time you know what is happening police officers are killing a lot of young african men it's the second leading cause of death in uh black men under 30 it's it's police violence so I mean, and it's just like, dude, why would you do it? If, if you were an African-American, you would be terrified getting pulled over. You'd be terrified, especially in these places. Dude, I am. You'd and be, I'm not. I, 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 right. I, I hate, I do not so like the police. They're not, they're not public servants how they should be. They're not trained. Well, well, they give them way too much fire. Like, why are we militarizing the police? You know, they serve like, why, why, why is that the thing? Yeah, we, they, they, they have, they have like the you know at some point like so so think about uh, it shows you the weird position that we put police officers in so many ways um, and I'm not at all defending the the the, the police officer. There's two points it. to everything, but, so. but but I'm I'm just so I'm just thinking about the school playground situation during the COVID. Um, there's a mom and a daughter playing at the playground, and a police officer has to get out of his car and he has to say, "Hey guys, you got to leave." Um, I, there's part of me that gets it, but there's part of me that's like like his job could be utilized in such a different way than this. Um, they're, they're following orders. Right. Mm-hmm. But I don't know, maybe there's a I don't know. spirit of the law versus rule of the law kind of concept. Mm-hmm. So it's like, if you, you don't go 100% by the book, you go by your gut to some degree. So there's a, uh, there's a story. It was in New York. There was a dude selling hot dogs and a cop came up and was like, hey, man, like, you, like, aren't zoned for here. Like, I, oh, I'm, right. I'm, 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 like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do anything about it, but I'm going to come back later. Would you just uh, please, please be gone so I don't have to. And this man, he uh, had his hands behind his back. Because, I mean, he was, like, falling on hard times and, like, was just going to shoot this guy if he was going to arrest him. And he didn't because the guy handled it just like by the spirit of the law, like, Hey, like this is just kind of unsafe, but it's not really affecting anyone. Mm. Go ahead and leave. So like cops really just have like this massive authority. And whenever you give people power, they just, they will use it inherently. So if you just let cops like, like laws are in place to keep people safe to some degree, right? Hypothetically. 
if we had less by the book people and more spirit of the law cops, I think it would be a lot different. But so then, then so look at situations like in our own town with Justin DeRosa. I mean, he he responded to a call and it was just a you know some sort of I don't know setup or something mm-hmm. like um in in so he if he's walking in with the spirit of the law like I'm giving these people and a I, I bet he was out. so it sucks because like one wrong player one one bad player is enough to like give that whole spirit that that police have to work with of like hey come on guys get out of here like you know that i don't know fuck we're just talking about like how to fight evil like how to get rid of evil i will say this i uh being a police officer is an unenviable position oh god because indefinitely i would say probably most cops are good people I I would think most people are good. Well, I inherently think almost all people are good at their core. Mm -hmm. They just either have been misled to some degree or not. But, like, the problem, like, with the police stuff is it's it's a brotherhood. Like, they they cover each other. So when you get one really shitty racist guy out of 99 and that dude dude fucks up, like, they just cover it. Like, that's why this riot happened, because they didn't prosecute the dude who did it. They just started firing people and aren't going to talk about it. If they would have just like prosecuted this man and show that they were going to like abide by the law that they should be abiding by. Like this man murdered this guy on duty, like unjustfully. He was trained not to do that. He did it anyways. He's got a history of doing this. So it's like, it it needs to come from inside police forces. Like they got us and it's not easy because like if you, you're the one dude that stands up, you're just going to get shunned out. So it's like this, um, it's almost like a cult, you know, like you can't, you can't speak out. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, the the human error in this, it just seems like we're going to have so many more reasons to have some sort of, like, fucking drone police force in society. I'm making a jump, but I, I mean, I do think that, I don't know, next 10 years max, I mean... I, See, but robots can't buy by the spirit of law, though. Right, that's no, the thing. it's going to be a problem. It's going to yeah. be even worse than it is now, because they just say, you're breaking the law, this is how I act. So I would do not want to take the human element out of police. That's the last thing. I don't barely but, want police to be the thing. But, but. but I think that we're going to have so much bullshit to where, but we're going to get to a point where people are like, yeah, that probably is the best option or something. And it's going to be bad. It's not, it's not a good thing. Um, I just don't know. I mean, like, like what else can we do? Like how, how do we make our, how do we make our police force better um, with actually being like intelligent and civilized and um and you know equal across the board because you know the the police academy in you know rhode island is not the same in minneapolis or whatever like i mean at least i don't think i don't know exactly how it all works but i don't know yeah it's gonna start with training really just better training i've seen video like i've really dived deep into this and I've seen the training videos that they show people like they hire third party third parties to train their cops to for some um, police forces. And um, they're just really highly militarized. The, a lot. Some police officers have like a like a fetishization of like Navy SEALs and wanting to be like an operator and being the guy and breaking in the door like you saw it a couple weeks ago. They broke into this man's house, not in police uniforms, shot his girlfriend, shot 20 times. He shot back. He's getting a he's going to federal prison because of it. They broke in. To the wrong house. He's not a criminal. Mm-hmm. So, you know what a Navy SEAL would never do? Like, the start is information. When do, they, when do you hear about the SEALs breaking in the wrong house? You don't. Like, mil, like real military ops, they know for sure yep. that this person's in there and this is the right house. Yeah, you got a job and you do it very well. So, you're riling these people up. You're giving them too much firepower and you're telling them to go be an operator. And they want they like to be that guy. They've seen all the movies, you know. They've seen, like, what is it? Like, American Soldier, Lone Soldier. Like, all all, all the, the war propaganda that, like, really fetishize, like, this overt force. Right. But they're not trained to. And I do think a lot of it comes from that. And then also, this is just a side note, the police are inherently there just to protect. uh, So if corporations own the government and government makes the laws and they hire the police, all the laws are going to be in favor of these people. So, you know, who doesn't go to jail? Uh, Anyone on Wall Street, anyone that commits like way more like do this dude forge a check at Target for 200 bucks, probably even if he did, it might not have been forged. You have like investment bankers 
inside trading for millions of dollars. Like, the, like there's just way worse crimes that go on, but they're just white collar. Right. So, but they don't, you know, the police aren't, they're not blowing their doors open. You know, it's, right. it just seems like it's a way to oppress movements to some degree. Like, it's just the watchdogs of the status quo. It's like, that's why. So in this hypothetical, all right. So your work, your you own a business. Okay, you own a big business. Your workers decide that they're tired of you taking advantage of them and reaping more benefit from the. So they make their their labor provides. You give them materials. Their labor makes your stuff more valuable. You sell it for a premium, but you don't pay them a lot. So they're all like, "Hey, man, we're trying to get we're tired of getting shafted. We're going to band together. We're going to strike." And they pick up the phone and they're like, they call the police and they're like, "Hey." You better come get these people in line. So they just protect the status quo to some degree. Like this is just the watchdog of the establishment. And that's why I inherently don't like police, even without all the racial stuff. But so, okay. So when you say that, when you say that the way that like the, I mean, the whole world understands is we identify with our jobs. And so like there's this like instant like this one wrong like across america right now i bet you in any police officer is maybe like one percent closer to like being a little more afraid of their life mm-hmm. themselves yeah i would be too if i was a cop. dude that's what i'm saying i don't envy cops at all not right. even a little bit no i know and it's it's such a fucking difficult weird conversation to have i mean i just i try to think i try to say okay here's the situation and like fuck what can we do about it not like i know everything about it. i don't know shit about it really um i just think that it's it is a big deal i think that if we're like burning fucking police stations um i mean you know riots it's it's going it could uptick something big like you know, we, we're not immune to war. We're not immune to like an internal war. There's already a culture war happening. I've yeah. been on Twitter. It's just like there's a massive yeah. divide in how people feel. Yeah. And I mean, Wait, what's the boiling point? Because it seems like there's like something new like this every every few months, every few weeks. There's something. Is it the media? Is is Yes, 100%. Is, I think it is the media because, like I said earlier, I really think that people are inherently good and intelligent and people are just misled. With like so, it's just every corporate media station is just mega propaganda one side or the other. So you are just, it causes division. Right. And I don't know if you've like looked into a man named Noam Chomsky. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Noam Chomsky's thing is, um, oh, what is it? It's uh, something about consent, but it's a term. And it's basically, so Americans' political spectrum is like very close together. But you, oh, manufacturing consent. You make one side look extreme and the other look extreme, but they're both really close together and you make people feel like there's no ideas outside of that. So then you make people like if you look at what the two parties agree on, it's almost everything. It's like guns, abortion and immigration. And that's it. That's the only three things that they contend on. And it's kind of just like this circus fake wrestling kind of thing. And they just tell you you're either on this side or this side, but they agree on hundreds of things and you don't really get to choose. So they pit everyone against each other and they don't get mad at any real problems. If you're not this, then you're that. Yes. And so. it, they, they give you a shit. That's a good example with Noam Chomsky. Noam, Noam Chomsky. Why am I? Noam Chomsky. Uh, like they give you, it's, it's like a yes or no question when yes or no is not the answer that you have. Like it's like, well, I, if, if you're not blue, then you're red or whatever. It's, it's, it's weird, but we don't understand that we're looking at things through that lens. So what um what's what's next so at, so after in a world where which is right now 90% of the news that everybody sees is from six different fucking companies I think it's less than that actually and that's the sad part okay so <laughs> in in a world where that's what's going on i mean the media whoever controls the media has the power that's just you you control the narrative you control the gated institutional narrative as yes. eric weinstein says um what what's after this like what's a where you know everybody realizes like hey this is fucked up we can't do this um of course there's like an up you know some uprising like this sucks riots whatever what's after that spencer what what's like how can we not fuck everything up so bad um what's after that so once people realize i mean i think dude people already have mastered i think we're there that's the thing is like but the problem is we're still playing teams we all have the same problems and they both pinpoint that and they give you a different solution and then they just force you to fight against each other. We're already here. There's already a massive distrust of government, news, all of it. Everyone's fucking sick of it. Like, we're at a boiling point, 100%. And all that needs to happen is we need to unify. So so the Hunger Games. 
So have you have you seen those movies? Or read the books? Uh, yeah, I've seen the movies. Yeah. So in in the end, where it's essentially like turn your weapons to the capital, you know, like that's essentially it's it's oh are are we the best? Is 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 region two the best? Is region three the best? Like that's what's been happening, and we're at this point where we're like we're all looking at each other, all the twelve factions or whatever, or the the twelve uh, whatever, and, and we're like, hey guys, it's not like we don't even want to fight each other. We're talking about the same shit. Um, so. So this is going to be a fucked up sentence, but who is the, who is the person we aim the arrow at, I guess, in the, in the end here? Like who is the, who is the behind the scenes shadow that's like fucking, who's, who's the puppet master? Well, who's fucking us well up? I mean, corporations own the government, but the federal government, these are our public servants that we vote in. So if you can untrick people, I mean, this is so demeaning to say that people get tricked into voting for people against their own, like, uh, good good intentions right but the news is so you have people have such poor information that they do i mean you see uh, like a lot of sides like right-wing populism so like trump he finds a bunch of problems like he's like hey like jobs are going all these things are happening you know but instead of we're outsourcing and doing all these things and we're allowing big corporations to exist in other countries it's mexicans are taking your jobs so you found a real problem you did, but now you force a narrative. So, like that, and that's how like a lot of things take off. And I don't think Donald Trump is the problem. I think he's a symptom of a problem. Right. Well, and the thing about the forced narrative now is you could find the people who are going to believe it. Like if you look at, um, I, I think that a lot of the world isn't currently aware of of like data, like the internet, the the people, Google and shit. They know so much more about you than you know about yourself. Like yes. they they know so much about you. So. The, when you're running an, when you're running for president like a, a lot of the reason why Donald Trump won is um, um, that's a narrow statement but a lot of the reason is because they found the right people who are going to vote so they know it's like who believes in these things where are they at like let's feed them as they watch YouTube as they're watching these things on their phone as they're on Facebook as they're scrolling through and we know that they're the type to vote for me and believe in these things um, based off of their data that we've gotten from all of their searches, from all of the things that they bought at Target because we own the credit company, credit card companies too. Like all this shit that they have on these people, they're able to directly feed to the right people too. Yeah. So, but but so those people are are essentially they're kind of suckers. Like they're not suckers. They're being made to look like suckers. Like their their choices and what they're arguing about is like. Like, it's not that you're wrong or right. It's like, why are you fucking arguing about that? What do you look around you? Your reality is not that. What are you talking about? So there's a lot of this, like, being fed things by people who want you to believe or be mad about the things that they believe and are mad about. Yeah, look at, I mean, look at the paradigm between CNN and Fox News. You know, they're both making you mad about something. It's just the opposite thing, but it's the same problem. Like, that's the thing. Like, you need to be mad at outsourcing, definitely. Like, all these movements just find a real problem. Like, as Americans, we all have really similar problems, no matter where you live. I mean, it's different in the city to the rural areas. Yeah, but, like, jobs. People are scared about jobs. So, if if somebody comes up and says, hey, this these people that look like this are the problem, it, like, it, it gives you agency to, like and part penalize that you're like oh okay yeah. i have a you can put I, it somewhere i have a distinct enemy that's causing all my strife and right. these are causing the problems and they also trick you into caring about shit you don't care about too that you shouldn't care about like uh like a lot of these problems like i mean abortion is definitely like that's an ethical choice and yeah they, that one's not people really do care about that that's a rough that's a hard one to figure we haven't even asked humanity figured that one out like, no and it's there's a lot of gray there. area and humans do really bad with gray area because there's not a line but dude i have to close that window because the pressure washer's driving me crazy okay okay oh what do we do about it what do we what do, do, about, we do it, about it i mean i'll just what we can do at this moment is we could take the jordan peterson approach and just concentrate on ourselves sort of thing so how do we how do people as individuals um like not you know i'm jumping from how do we solve this as humanity um just because i think that it's good to talk about with each other and i think that um i think that we shouldn't be afraid as just any any everyday people to discuss these things like man what do you think about it like just you you know we get so caught in arguments and like 
you know, putting ourselves and our own anger and our own beliefs in these situations that we miss out on being able to just talk about them as like, okay, hmm, you know, w- wondering out, th- wondering about them without ever fully like believing or settling in a, in a position. So, um, encourage anybody to just think about like, what, what's next for humanity or like, what, what would be better than what we're doing right now? Not just on an individual level, but like what, you know, just wonder aloud with your friends and, and try to have more of an intellectual conversation, but also on an individual level, Spencer, what could we do? You know, the, the, the typical watch less news, um, the typical, like, how can we, how can we help each other and, and help ourselves on like an individual well, level with these situations? The thing with politics is I think people start in the wrong spot. You can't start with news because they will force you to have an opinion. But if you start with political philosophy and do a lot of reading, okay, start with regular mm. philosophy, figure out how you feel about egalitarianism, how other people's lives matter, how you feel about the world around you, like what is reality, like all these things that are really important at like building a worldview, start there. And then if you actually just go from Socrates all the way up, you'll just start hitting political philosophy. Mm. Like you'll hit Hegel, Marx, um, oh shit, uh, Herbert, or uh, yeah, Herbert Spencer, which is a capitalist philosopher. Like you'll just hit him because philosophy just leads to politics because that's just the end road. That's where you apply right. this philosophy. So if you can develop a worldview before you get tricked by CNN, you're way more immune to it because you're like, hey, I know how I feel about stuff and how I want the world around me to look. So you are, you have this, your sniff test is amazing. Your skepticism is just way higher than it normally would be. And it's just really helpful for your life anyways to get in philosophy. It was one of the single most enjoyable and uh, helpful things I've ever done. Right. It's, 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 uh, it's, I mean, it's one of my favorite things. Like I, I absolutely love it, but it's, it's such a huge thing that like I stumbled in because I was looking for mental health and inevitably when you're trying to take care of yourself, you same, same with you. Me too. Yeah. Yeah, dude. It, it's like you start learning about the world around you and you start to learn like where you fit in it and how you can fit in it and um, what we've done in in the past. I mean like learning about history is, I still haven't freaking finished it yet, but Sapiens, uh, you've all, um, you all know Harari, but like learning about that, like it changes my worldview. I remember actually, I watched a fucking documentary, the one with Will Smith, it's on Netflix, um, One Strange Rock. Mm -hmm. Did you watch that one? Mm Mm-mm. I remember watching it and um, I was like also, you know, reading all this stuff. Um, but it, like it, I, that documentary changed like my outlook, like seeing these like super high def photos of the earth and um, understanding how like diatomes work um, and how like, like really, really getting the fucking backbone behind like, hey, the trees give you oxygen without them, you'll fucking die. Like, like really understanding how everything is, is one planet and how it keeps us alive. When it changes your your perspective and it, it also it seems weird to think like watching a documentary about the, the earth and the, and the planet is enough to change your political views but it is so i think uh, i agree with spencer get fucking smart dude like learn learn don't just argue with these narratives learn a better way to see narratives yes you know there i mean what do you always say go meta Go meta. Yeah. I, I'm stuck in it. I can't even Dude, go the third, else. the third point perspective on viewpoints. You can't you can't just show up into politics and start watching CNN and they're just going to tell you something that makes you vote for them. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's what's happening. They so want people. you to vote for them. They're going to tell you a bunch of talking points that you can throw at people that they disagree with. But you didn't. So just going back to Chomsky, you're okay. So if the the political spectrum is like a hundred inches long. American politics is two inches. Like it's just real close together. So you haven't looked at so many ideas that you might really like. And I'm not saying I oh, yeah, I like that. Good I engage point. in a lot of political discourse with people that don't agree with me just on Reddit. There's a subreddit called r slash political compass and it's a it's a graph. So it's four quadrants. So it's two axis instead of left to right. And I talk to people that don't agree with me at all all the time. And it's one of the best ways to understand someone's worldview. And even if you really disagree with them, you at least learn how to deal with their ideas better. So do not insulate yourself from other people's ideas and go find a bunch of people that agree with you and then hole up. Go listen, because right. worst case scenario, you figure out why those ideas are bad and how you can make your ideas better. And I think in the midst of this, a lot of times, uh, you know, something I always try to improve on is like how heated you get, how like when you're discussing them, because sometimes you will stumble across stuff where it's like, oh, I do feel strongly about this. And I do actually know quite a bit, you know, 
Um, like police brutality makes me kind of mad. I'm not going to lie. Right. But, but you also have the ability to, like, I just see like you're talking about Reddit comments. I see them digress so fucking quickly. It hurts me. Um, which is, I mean, it's hilarious because the smart people like jump away from the knuckleheads mm -hmm. and, and by that, I mean like they people, go thread who, out. people who are just like all of a sudden they have different views and they're like, fuck you, bro. Your mom's so stupid. It's like, what? Yeah. You just just ad hominem attack. attack. Yeah. Um, so I think also, um, you know, I, I observe, I observe the way. I, I learn by watching other people and, and and learning about them and then running that through the filter of me. So um, I watch a lot of people like my dad, for example, he's very exuberant and loud and big when he talks about stories and he'll be telling about this story where he's just telling you that he walked into the, the grooming shop and there was a, a yellow Labrador. You know, he's telling you that story, but it's this long and he's like, and you'll never fucking believe. And, and he's just all big and he's, he'll lean into your face and he's, so he's telling that story and it's, it's, you know, he's, he's a storyteller and it's great. But when we're passionate about things that maybe we're disagreeing with someone, we, we accidentally sometimes talk at people like, like um, I use my dad as an example cause he's, he's, he's exuberant. He doesn't try to be, but if he was talking passionately, he'll start putting his finger in your face and stuff. And he, he doesn't see that he's like bringing it to a position where a majority of people, 75% of people sitting across the table from him are going to be in, uncomfortable. And they don't really want to have the combo anymore because it's like, you're, you're like yelling at me. I wasn't trying to debate. I was just kind of wondering what you thought about this and we can maybe compare our ideas. Um, I'm not saying like be calm if you're not a calm person, but just be aware of when you're having these conversations. Like every time the other person starts talking, maybe let out a belly breath, man. Like just like, okay, that relax my shoulders, um, calm my eyebrows. Like these are kind of overly obvious things, but I think that a lot of us get so caught up in talking at each other instead of with each other. We can, we can form a third, we can form a, a third, like, you know, meta, uh, look at the problem when you just combine and, and, allow each other to both have like a calm input so not everyone that you talk to is going to be good faith you know mm -hmm. sometimes they just want to shit on you and you got to realize when that's happening mm -hmm. but i'll never go into a conversation thinking that the biggest important thing that i could say and this is not i i'm good at this but most people aren't and it's really frustrating for me to talk to people i'm close to like family members about politics they're not listening to me Mm -hmm. but I'm give I'm giving a lot of effort to try to understand their point and they're not giving any effort to understand mine, which if they're trying to win an argument, they immediately win because you're like, okay, yes, I see what you're saying, but then they don't do that with you. They don't even take your ideas into consideration. It's very frustrating and no one learns. So like you're never going to learn anything if you don't listen to people. Yeah. And even if they've got ideas that you don't agree with, listen to them anyways, because they help temper your worldview. Let's talk about listening. Like, like, uh, let, let's, let's break the glass listening. Like, like after a while you are unaware that you're looking in each other's eyes, you're, you're unaware. So like this conversation, we start out, um, in certain areas we like wander off and we, and we glance over, but when you're listening, um, how do we, how do we explain listening? Because I think that, uh, I always want to blame social media and phones, but I think that there's this weird for a long time, I would think that I was listening, even though with my right hand, I'm like, oh, if sending out that text, I'm going, oh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but what I would be doing a lot of the times is I was listening, but kind of selectively. Um, it wasn't on purpose. But I think that our attention spans jump to jump farther outside of the conversations and it's like okay what are you jumping to are you trying to be right are you trying to contribute to the conversation um as you're talking to someone looking them in the eyes um hearing what they're saying um what are you saying to yourself in your head are you in also in your body language are you going mm -mm, mm -mm. are you shaking your head are you going oh, okay are you acting accidentally kind of body language and contempt um uh, kind of you know another strange thing to point out but i think that becoming aware of our body language and how we're listening. Like what's actually happening when you're listening? What is listening? How do I do it? How can I do it better? Um, Cause I think that little kind of shit is a lot of like what's, what's going wrong with a lot of these conversations. Conversations are escalating to arguments and debates. And so all we want to do because we don't want to step on each other's feelings or like feel uncomfortable, we just fucking memeify everything and we short sentence everything. And we just like say catchphrases to each other sometimes. 
Like, I, I think that conversations are more important than that. Yeah. And we're deflecting discomfort, too. I would say just get out there and start debating people. Start talking to people who don't agree with. It's debating, and I'm not saying it isn't like a rhetoric, not to, not to like be, not to win, but to just have a discussion because there is a flow of you say something, I counter, you say something, I counter, I say something, you counter, that is just inherently part of talking about things that are more than like, how was your day? So, like, debating is fine. It just, you got to be receptive and you can't just because it's so hard to be really clear in all your ideas that you feel really good about and then have somebody not agree with you and you don't have any rebuttals. And I think that's what really happens. You say something you think is like, this is part of your worldview. You really agree with. And somebody's like, no. And they're like, well, and then they say X, Y, and Z. And then you don't have a response to X, Y, and Z. So you feel uncomfortable. So then you memeify. So right, right there. Yeah. yeah. That's like a fucking error. Like we need to put like a 404. There's something wrong here. And then you get that little pit and you start breathing quick and you can't think. And then you just don't display one. You don't display your ideas how you want it to. And two, the conversation devolves. So I would say really, well, get go read what logical fallacies are and go read through them and then try to pick out when people do them to you. Because when they make a lot of bad ones, you can understand when they're being not good faith. They're mm -hmm. being a bad faith actor and they're just trying to stifle you. And then just get into philosophy. I, I didn't know this was the answer for the other thing, but getting into philosophy yeah. really helps you parse through really floaty topics in general, like uh, political theory, religion, like right. any of these things that are big no-nos, like having an objective epistemological view just it really helps weed through it because then you your sniff test is good. Like you can smell the bullshit if it's really coming. And you can tell when people are just trying to like defer you away from a topic. Right. And Go ahead. Go ahead. And it's just, it's not always about winning. I mean, really get it out of your head that you're trying to win. You're trying to understand this person. And most importantly, if you make a good effort for them to understand them, they might understand you and you maybe change their mind about something. You're never going to change about everything. But if you attack them, you're not going to convince them of anything. Right. right. You, you really just want them to be more sympathetic to you. So when they see people like you, they're not going to be so vile. Right. Yeah. And, and you can formulate new ideas together. Like it doesn't have to be like, oh, here's what I learned and I want to prove that it's right or wrong. It's, it's, it's like, like what if they have, what if they read the other half of what you did on that? Uh, there, there's a podcast called stuff you should know how stuff works. Um, and those two, they basically like as research their own areas of the internet, like, and they come back and they or like uh, on a subject and they come back and they discuss it. Not like I'm more right than you. They discuss like, oh, here's what I found about that. Oh, Oh, that's crazy, Chuck. I didn't read about that part. That is very incredible. So you learn about a subject together. Um, and I think that that's super available for everybody in their everyday lives. Um, I just want people to get better at conversations. So we were talking earlier um, about conspiracy theory, which we're going to jump to after one more suggestion, philosophize this on YouTube. Um, I think that's a good place to start. Did you ever go onto that channel, that YouTube channel? Uh, I've listened devices. to every single one of those podcasts. Yeah, dude, uh, th this is a great place to start because I think, you know, when you say, oh, let's learn about philosophy. I think, I hope that people's brains don't go, well, I need to go to the library and I need to check out Socrates and, well, I mean, you know, do that too, but also maybe listen to that podcast as well. Right. No. Yeah. Well, well, but I, I mean, um, getting people lending your hand down and pulling them up off the ground, getting them started. Like just don't overthink it. Go to YouTube and start to listen to these in the morning and they'll kind of make you think about the world a little bit differently. And if you're in college, like if you're going to school, go take a philosophy class. Please do that. It's been the most. So taking humanities classes, I've taken every single humanities class at the community college and it was the most enriching thing that I've ever done for me in academia. It's changed me forever, like the way I look at the world, the way I think about things. It, like it was very, very awesome, and I highly recommend it. I I would love to do that. I I I'm a little concerned with my attention span. Sometimes I, you, I I mean I love the subject though, so I feel like I would probably be able to pay attention. The teacher, the professor that does most of them, is the only like academic person that has ever actually affected my actual life. Wonderful. Yes, like give her a million hugs she's one of my favorite people shout her name it her name is mary leach at lcc cool. like if you can go take one of her classes she is one of the most excellent professors ever Great. i really really enjoyed her and all my close friends she's their favorite teacher too she's just awesome i highly recommend it cool um yeah guys check out philosophy spencer what do you think about conspiracy theories what is conspiracy theory when was it invented what do you know about mk ultra Dude, oh, okay. Actually, a lot, and uh, that's a good way to start. So, uh, conspiracy theories have evolved. They used to be like, is Bigfoot real? Blah, 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 stuff like that. Like, oh, are there aliens? And then JFK assassination, all stuff like that. 
but I think, well, right-wing media does actually just peddle a lot of conspiracies, like a massive amount. Like that right. side of the news media is just always on top of it. Our president does it. So like a lot of people in authority positions do it. And I think the reason conspiracies are getting so popular is because, you know, lefties have realized that we don't really have a lot of control in society and like there's no grand plan and everything is just chaos and it, there's a lot of nihilism. But people that will lean more right, this is obviously a massive generalization. Um, like one of the right wing values is like personal liberty, freedom, solidarity. Like I want to be my own agent in the world and I want like I can do all these things like I have the power over my own life. So that inherently draws you to these grand narratives that explain something that uh, like would insinuate that some, there's a master plan. There's something in control and mm -hmm. I'm the one that figured it out. So it gives you it gives you agency over the world to some degree because there's a thing that you can change. There's like once we pull this linchpin, it's the way. And it's just because the world is so hectic, a narrative is very helpful. JP talks about narratives all the time. It's how we parse through a lot of things. I mean, I don't actually agree with a lot of philosophy, but he, we do use narratives to describe a lot of things. And these narratives are really convincing to people and it makes them feel like there's liberty, like there's solidarity in the world and people get attached to them and then they attach their idea, identity to them and they find a bunch of pe people that believe that mm -hmm. and now like, oh, I'm an active X or I'm a flat earther, stuff like that. But I really just think it's a, it's just a symptom of that. Well, so, so when we say conspiracy theories, there's through, in my head, I think, um, you know, like CIA and aliens and, in in the government and UFOs, but I also think of, you know, like, uh, like, Epstein and like the fucking Clintons killing everybody. I think and those like, are just beyond those. That just happens. I well, feel like. Well, so well, but that's the thing is, it's all being thrown into. So conspiracy theory, the the terminology. I think it was after JFK, the assassination. Like it was essentially to. There's there's some sort of proof somewhere um, that I can't pull out of my butt right now. But there's some sort of something somewhere that says conspiracy theory was actually invented after I think the JFK assassination to actually diverge people away from like look away sort of it was this thing made up by the government the word and so it's kind of like a way to disperse um, crazy people like like so so if like oh you're just a conspiracy theorist so it's a good way to brush off people and not make it a serious conversation um, but so how do we because because what I think I'm saying is is there's fucking importance in like conspiracy theories because like there has to be a ground just like comedians have they're the ones who find the edge of like hey we're taking this thing too seriously and we're gonna kill each other if we don't laugh about it um, conspiracy theories are almost like hey this is like these people are really good at this corruption we need to help that or um, th there's an there's an important spot for conspiracy theory in mm -hmm. society. It frustrates the hell out of me because people, so it's usually conspiracy start with something that might be true, like 5%, and then people paint a whole narrative behind it. Mm. So, like, I don't understand why people have to dig so far to feel like the government is doing unscrupulous things. Like, they tell you that they're doing them, right. you know? Like, they told us the war in Iran was unjustified. Like, they told us about MK Ultra. Like, they're just telling us the shit they're doing. Like, why do you even have to dig? Like, you can just see it. My favorite one that's recent is... Bill Gates is going to use the vaccine to put microchips in you to track you. But you know what people carry around all the time? GPS is with microphones and they're called cell phones and you obligatorily give away your rights to have one. So like what see so they just don't use a skeptical eye on all these things. Like they don't there's no reason. It just they just take this narrative off and run with it. But the problem is the government gives people no leeway because they do a bunch of shitty things. And of course that might be true. So it's right. like, I, the one thing I do like conspiracies though, is they make people really skeptical of the government in which you need to be. I'd rather have a, a population of conspiracy theorists being an all loony rather than people that are really subservient. Do you see a world where when we talk about the government, they, where we feel a sense of trust because now it's like, I mean, I trust the government as much as I trust the fucking media. And it's like, I don't know, you know, it, it's an uncomfortable feeling for people in a society to realize like, oh, there's not someone who's ultimately looking out for me. They're looking out for like their plan for what gives them the most, not only money in their pocket, but uh, I, I think, I think it gets to a point with these people. I think humans are so impressive and they can like, 
train their brains to be such a fucking machine that there's so many people who it's not like they're just trying to get more mimosas and more islands and more Ferraris. I don't think it's that. I think that it's like they're so like the the roots are just so deep and like dug in to like what they're doing that they're so detached from I don't know. Do, do, do you see a world where we trust the government, Spencer? No, and I hope we never do. Yeah. Never. I hope that the, you know what, the government should always be scared of their people. We should always hold people in power accountable. They, they serve us. That's why they're there. So, so when it comes to so when it comes to things like, um, not specifically UBI, but like that would be like the start of like this one world government. Um, it's so fucking dangerous. Like, okay, you're gonna seems have to like, elaborate. Seems, I I think that those things trip over each other. So, if if we were trying to lean towards, I think that we're at such a dissolving distrust for our governments, like not only in America, but like just everywhere. Like it's like there's Western no... democracy is just collapsing essentially. Right. Okay. Yeah. So how do we, it's, it's, okay. The reason why I said one world government is because I think that the only thing that could come after this is like realize how far advanced we are with technology, how connected we really are, how we have to take action about, you know, uh, uh, global warming, like all these things. Um, it seems like, What's coming is, hey, we've all got to bound together. But also with that, let's all bound together. There might be some sort of like one fucking government or um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to sound hippie and conspiracy theory when I say one, one world government. I'm literally just saying like more than just there, there's going to be these nationalist views. Like it's okay. America still going to exist, but I think there's going to be something that's kind of. I mean, that's kind of what I mean. Look at the banks. They already are that. But they're all fucking corrupt. No, but they already do just sit above everything. Like, the banking system in general is very ubiquitous. Like, uh, and this is why conspiracy theories run off, because is there a hint of truth to, like, this probably cabal that kind of... does? They don't, probably don't sit in some shady, dim-lit room planning out the world, but there definitely is people that have a lot of power that reaches through every major country and every major power that probably do call some shots and do control money. I mean, cause at the end of the day, it is just like controlling the circulation of money. What I will say is though, like authoritarian governments, like, well, we are authoritarian government, China, Russia, uh, they don't get along historically. They want to impose their rule. They want no infringement on it. So we will never really have a unified government. It'll never happen because I mean, the incentive of, I mean, we're national, like national pride, like, uh, we're Americans, we're not going to be, we're not part of China. We're not that. You know, the Russians are extremely nationalistic, so is right. China. Like, all these really hyper-military, like Iran, like, we're all, other than the fact that China technically is a communist regime, like, they are very totalitarian, they've got a big police state, same with Russia. Like, we're very similar to them, other than our economic platform. Like, we're not getting along. It's not going to happen, ever. I really doubt it. I mean, if anything, one will conquer the other. But I don't think that UBI is going to be the start of that. I actually think that um, I think that it's a good idea. Like, why? Like, why shouldn't people get the money? Like, if we're going to bail out the cruise line industry that banks offshore and doesn't pay taxes, why would you not give people money? Like, if we're the richest nation to ever live ever in the history of forever, and we spend seventy five percent of our budget on military, even like, why can't people stop starving? That would feel great, you know. Like, why? Why, if your grandma gets cancer, you have to file bankruptcy, but we buy bombs and bail out the cruise line industry? Yeah, our, our priorities are a little messed up. No, because you know what? Curing grandma's cancer doesn't make money, and that's what it comes down to, and that feels bad. And that's why maybe burn it down's not terrible. The problem is that chaos ensues more chaos, and every uprising has led an authoritarian government because they have the means to take over after you topple something because there's a lot of instability. But then we also come to the problem of where if we do it really slowly, you get one president in who's on the other side that doesn't want it, who undoes the last eight years of progress. Mm -hmm. So like, where are we at? Like you can't do it slow. Like, right. like there's this liberal fantasy of like incremental change, but it just goes away. I don't see how we have just one motherfucker. Like how do like Dude, the, the president thing is just so dorky. Like, well, I, I mean, I don't know what, like, again, it's an, it's an undesirable spot. It's just like, we're talking about police officers. Like, I don't know the answer, but I can see that like what we're doing doesn't seem to be working out. Mm -mm. 
No. What a okay. Imagine this conversation. We're having this conversation. We're curious about the government. Blah blah. But we were in China. Imagine, like, this is something I wanna I wanna point out because I don't think that people understand what's like also going on in China too, or may, maybe. Well, they I don't do, think that uh, any of us do in America. So actually, so, so that's the thing. Yeah. So what what if every image we're seeing of China is completely like just fucking made up by the media? Well, I'm sure to some degree. Like, go to r slash uh, Sino or Sino. It's a pro-China sub. And it's just very interesting to see the other point of view because I... Unde- so, we are having an economic war with them. So, everything, all the footage that we see of, like, all of it is just very forced through a narrative. And I'm not... I don't like authoritarianism. Like, I'm a libertarian to some degree. I'm just a libertarian left, not right. So, I don't really like capitalism either. But they... They're of an authoritarian police state, and so are we. So, like, yeah, I mean, I, I just pointed out because it's like, so, so it, it, if it's true, I'm just, I think it's, it's important to watch, like, what, what they're doing, we may end up doing. Do you think, dude? Uh, you, I don't know if you've been on Twitter yet today. No. Okay, there's pictures of the Hong Kong like press, yeah, like taking pictures of police officers, and they're just allowing them, and they arrested a CNN reporter this morning. So we might sometimes be a little more authoritarian than China. Mm. I just think that we get really conflated with America is like this very free, ubiquitous nation where you do whatever you want. You threw a majority of his color. I don't know, man. China's pretty interesting, though. Like, I would love to be a fly on the wall and figure out just what, uh, like, what really goes on there. Because right. they did have the greatest growth in economic power and um, standard of living of any country to ever live in like 35 years. Like it's, it's unprecedented. And I mean, I've seen reports of like, if you're, I mean, they oppress the shit on minorities, but I mean, so do we. So like we redline districts and that they've got a really, really high um, standard of living in a lot of places. Like they really take care of people that are native born. So what about, so I've seen they're like, they have um, like imprisonment camps and shit over there right now. Yeah. That's not acceptable. Like that's what I'm saying. They like really oppress minorities. Yeah, so, so that's the hard thing is it's like hard to know. I mean, and again, it's not like, it is hard for our brains when we, like, even when we talk about things like, okay, I saw this, like, well, is that all of China? Is that like a, a bunch of bad actors like is it the, is that like the joe biden of china that is doing the the you know bad shit like you know what i mean like it's so hard for our brains to conceptualize because um it, you know we can't juggle all this fucking craziness we don't know what's actually true when we're reading it uh, but it's it we want to watch it and we want to see like oh hey what's going on over there because we don't want that to happen to us um because i think that you know look at um uh uh like the technology that they're going to start implementing over there is obviously going to trickle over to where we're using. We're using like facial recognition and stuff over there to charge people if they jaywalk. Dude, those insane. sort of things like, you know, that could be our reality. But they've just granted uh, police access to facial recognition in Washington. Really? Yeah. Really? Yep. So, dude, it's happening. Like, and this is <laughs> why you got to keep government in check. Like, right. we the people are powerful. We got to band together and we got to yeah, stop right, fighting right. because we cannot allow a police, like a real police state to happen. Right. Or we, but the problem is we're sold that we're Americans, we're free. We're sold this narrative that we are the freest country. We're the best country. We have the most liberty. But we're actually getting police stated and we're killing minorities. Right. But, but yeah. So, yeah, so the narrative they use is like, hey, they're taking away your freedoms. And they're like, wait, no, I'm fucking free. They don't do that to me. Yeah. And then you write. It's a, it's a narrative that they feed you to spark you in certain ways. Yes, and both sides do it. So, uh-huh. like, uh, Trump passed some um, some very unscrupulous authoritarian bills, like, just for tracking, like, for gun rights. Like, there were red flag laws. He slipped into another bill. So, like, this one thing, like, I think, give people guns. Like, I know gun violence is a massive problem, and we should probably regulate them better not more but having an armed populace like I, I ultimately i'm the most scared of the government at the end of the day like so but he even the right who's supposed to not gun snatch he, he's gun snatch more than obama people just don't read the bills so like they're all taking away our rights all the rights you think they're protecting they're mm-hmm. just snatching them away and until we can like just come together and like say hey stop it yeah. like we're a unified people which right. the media won't allow us to do it's just gonna get worse and worse until we right. have like 
what Hong Kong is right now? Well, I think people just just being aware, trying to be aware, try to realize like, oh, are my opinions just from the media? Like how much how much am I actually mad about this? Um, what are my actions here? How can we communicate this better? Do I know, do, do I, d just like a slot machine is designed to make you sit down longer and, and get the wins and, and spend more money and put more quarters in, social media in the news is made to get you to keep on clicking, man, to, to keep on staying on there. So the it, it's a runaway train. It's a runaway train and get the fuck off the tracks. Like l look around and do your own research and, and, and come together. Yeah. And but, if you can build a philosophical base or an ideological base, no one will ever trick you out of it. You know, right, you can yeah. change your ideas, but you're never getting tricked by anyone because right. you know how you feel. It's, it's like learning how to learn. Yes. It's, it's, it, so it's kind of like we were talking about with health. I think that's another important thing with health is like, okay, yeah, you're going to follow this diet and you're going to do exactly what this thing wrote down. And you're like, okay, but if you're not understanding it, then you're going to get to your goal in 12 months. You're going to get to your goal and you're going to look great at, the, at the, um, for, for that vacation. But then because you didn't learn how to take care of your body properly, you didn't learn how, if I'm not exactly following this regimen that this piece of paper says, um, I, if you don't know anything about your body, you're just going to fall right back on it. So I think it's it's learning how to learn, like use the tools, learn how to really fucking use the tools, learn about new tools before you go into the, into start building, you know. Yeah. And learn how to extrapolate data. That's a big thing is it's very easy to mislead people with data. Is if you don't, if you just say 40% of this is this and people don't look into it, like you can make anything say anything. So you just have to be way more thorough with how they got these numbers, like mm -hmm. who's paying for these numbers to be made. Right. In any way, in any form of study or data management, like just figure out where it's coming from, figure out where the bias is, and then right. maybe you can see, hey, they're trying to mislead me with this, or hey, this is good data. But the problem is, it takes a lot of time, it's very hard, mm -hmm. and that people don't like either of those things. Yeah, I mean, so that's the thing is, like, we live in such a society of, of headline reading. I mean, I'm so guilty of it myself, like, it's impossible to not, like, I will formulate, I will in my head argue the opinion that I formed just from the art, the headline of an article. So I'll be like, this is messed up, but then I won't like, and I'll think that in my head without reading through it. Some people just are posting on whatever, but uh, I think uh, learning, hmm, I pigeonholed myself. I would, uh, yeah, I would say, well, 70 to 80% of people only read the headline. Hmm. Oh, Okay, I remembered. Uh, so think about percentages anyway. So think about uh, w when we're looking at, like, we took this poll. Well, who were the people and where were they and where did they live? And what there, there's, like, all these different things. Like, oh, we we, we took a poll and 16% of people said that they prefer this. Well, they only interviewed 100 people. You know what I mean? And, we'll for, and then we'll put that up against some, like, peer-reviewed thing that reviewed 100,000 people or something. Um, I think that we look at percentages and stats. So I think, uh, you know, Steven Pinker is a good, a good example of this. I haven't actually read his books, but have you heard of Steven Pinker? I've heard the name. Um, essentially he's just like, if you look at percentages, like, oh, we're actually, uh, if you're looking at the optimal, like we're actually better than we've ever been. The way of living is blah, blah, blah. Um, we're this percentage higher in these areas. Um, it's basically giving you two things to look at and to compare, but life is not just this or that. Life is so much gray area. Um, yeah, maybe we're the best in economy, but like, what about fucking happiness? What about people killing themselves? Like, what's going on with that? Um, I think that we we compare and we look at pigeonholes or, or um, just double use that word for no reason. Uh, we look at what the media tells us to look at. Mm -hmm. We don't really compartmentalize and sit back and say like, what is this data? Like, what does this mean? This this percentages? What does that have to do with the subject that I'm pursuing. What does this have to do with the why of humanity? Um, I think, yeah, I guess just running it back through the lens of, uh, um, you know, numbers not being, I forget exactly what I started with. Yeah. That, well, the economy is a good example of being misled because having a really on paper strong economy doesn't actually translate to how people's lives are. And you could see this exactly. from one picture on CNN three weeks ago, Dow Jones up 700 unemployment rate up to 30%, same screen. It's like, well, okay. So all these numbers, like the stock market isn't only a good indicator of how uh, wealthy people are doing. 
And when you look at, oh, our stonks are so high, it's or the Dow Jones is at 28,000 or like a record high, but you look at it, we've had wage stagnation since 1970, and you've got 30% less buying power than your father would with the same job 30 years ago. Okay, so are people really doing better? No, they're not. They're not. Even if the unemployment rate is low, like that could, that doesn't account for people that are underemployed for their education either. So it's like there's just like a massive amount of factors that go into this one number that they're selling you. Like there's a lot of externalities that go along with things. And if you can sum up a whole massive economic system in one single number, well, you can't. And you shouldn't believe that, that that's the truth. Right. Yeah. yeah pe- pe- it's it's this this smoking gun. Like this, this, this is such a typical sentence, a statement. But that smoking gun thing is like, well, no, the percentage of this and the Dow is this. How is that not better? Clearly, so-and-so has done the best for our blah, blah. And you're like. Somebody's doing well, though. Somebody is. Sure. But sure. Not. But like, what what are you talking about here? Like, what do you when? Why are you pigeonholing this comparison? Like, we just we need to start with why, man. Mm-hmm. We need to start with why uh, and re ask ourselves all these questions. Well, and you're going to see a lot of bad data coming out really soon because as the economy starts coming back online, it's going to be like GDP growth was 25 percent this month. Well, yeah, no shit. We didn't do any GDP for three months. So if, like. If you have 100% of something and you take 50% away, you're going to need 100% of that new thing to get back to 100%. That makes sense. Right. Because you're going to need double what you had. So it's like number percentages get really conflated when you drop them down and bring them back up. So like let's say we drop 99% and then we gain 100%. It's at 2. It's not at 100 yeah, so people, you can be really misconstrued by just percentages in general, and sometimes you got to look at raw numbers. Yeah, I mean, either way, I... Yeah. But that's inherent. That's pretty misleading, though. That example definitely is, because it's like, oh, 100%. That's good. Can't be higher than that. Right, yeah. Th- they simplify our shit for us, like, it, and it's not a good thing. So I guess just don't be, don't be a sucker. Yeah, don't be know? a sucker. Don't be a dang it's sucker. It's really hard, though, because you can't know everything about anything, or you can't know everything about everything. And uh, I'm definitely a sucker sometimes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like my girlfriend is an esthetician, and I don't know anything about skin. Like, she could fool me about anything. Anything. Doesn't matter. Anything that involves skin, I'm a sucker. You got me. I'll refer right. to somebody else that knows more to me. But that's a good thing, though. So if you have skin problems or you have skin issues or, or questions, you're going to be like, hey, can you tell me about makeup? Can you tell me about this? It's actually so nice because I don't have to deal with it. You know, like having a – I like that to have experts around you – about stuff that isn't super interesting to you, but you can just refer to them with your trust. Mm-hmm. I wish the news was like that. That's dude, what it should be. Because it's so nice. Because like you just, you already know this. Tell yep. me, please. Yeah, I, I texted my, uh, I have a group message full of friends and there's probably like five five of our, our female friends in there. I was like, all right, girls, my hair looks ridiculous. How do I make it not look like total shit, but I also don't want to do anything. Like mm-hmm. I was hoping for something to put in it right after I get out of the shower and then I don't touch it. And they gave me that. <laughs> they told me exactly what to get, and it's Olaplex. I don't know anything about it, but I put it in my hair, and it looks nice. Nice. Yeah. So it's a win. Yeah. Go into experts, dude. You can have a friend circle full of experts. So just just learn your shit, and then you can combine your shit with other people's shit, and that's how you form community. Yeah. Like a couple of my friends just know a lot about computers, and I was like, uh, maybe I'll learn about it, but no, nah, I'll just ask them to do it, mm-hmm. and I'll just tell them about fitness, and then we win. Everyone wins. Yes. That's great. Yeah. It's, it's so important. Um, we're getting up here in time. You got to head out here pretty soon. Let's send it off with Neuralink. Have you have you watched um, the Elon Musk episode with Joe Rogan? Do you know about Neuralink within a year? Oh, Neuralink. Yeah. N- Neuralink. Yeah. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, w- w- what's your thoughts on this? Like, did you see he's like, this is going to, you know, it's. What do I gonna- think about Neuralink? Oh. I well, think. well there, there's new, like he, he named off all the shit that it's going to do and it's within a year it's going to be done. So what I think is, well, this is, I mean, just writing RP, like tabletop RPGs, like D&D, but sci-fi versions, you get into a lot of sci-fi tropes. Like in a capitalist society, some people are going to be able to afford the brain chips that makes them think better and then they can make more money. And now you have a bigger wealth gap. That's mm-hmm. frightening. The gap, you huge. get somebody that, and then they can communicate essentially telepathically. So now you've got a race of people, a new race that can communicate without talking perfectly. Mm-hmm. Like 
you know how words fail, you know? Like when I go to describe something and you don't know what I'm talking about all the way, I can just send you exactly what I'm seeing. Yep. So now they can communicate better silently and make more money because they can think better and make better rational decisions because they have a computer in their brain while poor people don't get to do that. So I honestly wouldn't, I don't want it to happen until you can make it ubiquitous, until everyone can have an, can, until everyone can do it if they want, because it's going to cause such a massive divide and we already have such a big class divide. Right. But on like sci-fi nerd, do I think it's the coolest shit ever? Yeah, that is the coolest thing that I've ever heard. So I think uh, I have this like in, this intuition that Elon Musk is not evil. Like there's a lot of people who are just yeah, like, no, he's, he's a Bond villain. He's just a narcissist, but I love him. Yeah, I, I think that he's awesome. I don't know. I, I think that I think that he is going to try his best to make sure that it gets to the people who like it. Like if, if he can get it to poor people in different third world countries, I think he just might, you know, I have a more a less optimistic view on Elon Musk. I think, I, I think a lot of people do. Yeah, well, no, but not as bad. So at the end of the day, he is a billionaire and he's accrued a lot of money and he, that's what he does. He makes money and uh well, you, he's trying to do the minimalist thing now. He's like planning on like selling his house and shit. Yeah, I will say I really like what he's doing for technology. Big ups, dude. You're making everyone's life better. You're trying to save the planet. But he does have some very catastrophic opinions on other things that he's not an expert in. But since he is big smarty pants boy, he just goes and has all these opinions and he's an authoritative force. But it's like, mm-hmm. hey, if like I was a doctor, like, would you talk to me about like herbology or like plants. See, this is where I don't know because there's so many people who are I start to think that some people are just good thinkers. Like I I think we should have people who are really smart. They've shown themselves to be smart and they're good at problem solving without extreme bias. Uh I don't know. There's there's parts of me that that think that like just because you don't have the degree doesn't mean that your opinion isn't as good. Doesn't mean that like the way that you see the thing isn't as important. I don't know. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I don't think you need a college degree to have good opinions. You just need to have good rational skills and epistemological skills, and you need to be able to reason through things. So, so what? So what I think I was hinting at is like I think that his opinion is actually like important. Like I, I, I value his opinion because he's such a smart motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, um, but- he may have less experience, I guess, but it's it's hard to. To know. But if you look at somebody who's basically socially inept because he's so smart and you tell him to have a bunch of ideas on social issues, they might not be the best. True. That's true. Yeah. Great. And that's kind of what I was hitting at. Like a lot of his like mm. social things are probably not great. And he also just is a narcissist. That de- Definitely. And that's fine. He does the world a great service and you can be a narcissist. There's a lot of them and they do a lot of worse things than he does. But that doesn't always lead to... Uh, uh, admitting your own faults when you're wrong about social things because your image of you is a big smarty pants boy genius and right. my opinion is correct even though maybe you have not taken the time to look at this idea very much right hmm. well spencer it's been great i do want to say one thing though after yes. like all the catastrophic talk about how the world's going so historically i have a lot of faith in humanity you know things have just yes. always gotten better even though if we're in like a little setback period over the course of time, ever like more people have had more freedom and more rights over the thousands of years that humans have been alive. And I don't mm-hmm. think that that's going to stop. I think that good's going to win. And I think that like all this bigotry and all these bad things that are happening are slowly just going to, it's going to take a lot of work and a lot of pushback, but people are willing to do that and it's just going to get better and better. Excellent. Excellent. I agree, man. I think so too. I'm, I'm optimistic about the future. Um, I'm curious. It's, it's, it's going to be crazy. I hope that we don't have um hope that there's not a bunch more bad before good sort of thing but uh i i am optimistic about the future of humanity it only gets better all right listener drink some water and if you have a stretch today man what like what's wrong with you what are you doing get your shit together and stretch a little bit peace out bye bye <laughs>